give me a uh give me a are these are these horror movies are they just insane movies what are we working with um so the last time we did this i tried to make a little kind of a, a d different vibes these all fall under very weird movies they're not some are extremely gory some are not gory but they all fall under like a premise that is just extremely odd outside of the box kind of um uh um are some of these disturbing some of them are disturbing yeah because <laughs> i know we did the whole disturbing list but when you ordered this one you did you i believe you said you know we like more on the weirder end right yeah so although there are some disturbing ones in here, um, they're all very weird. And some I got I, like the last list. I started off kind of lighthearted. We're going to do some like kind of comedy weirdness. And then we get into some surreal weirdness. And then towards the end, it just starting starts to get like, oh, fuck, this is like this is a lot. Perfect. That's so, what I'm talking about. And I'm I, yeah, we're, I'm going to put this in the video. So that'll be our intro. But Justin, welcome back, man. You you uh, left an impression on the first episode uh it was pandemonium the people were on their feet for that episode that's good that's what we want uh and unfortunately my punk ass has still not seen martyrs i gotta change that yeah i've just yeah, yeah. i've been busy man what do you want me to do you know no, i've uh, got you. a lot going on dude a lot of movies to watch my brother if uh mvd put it out i'd watch it tomorrow you do gotta watch martyrs though <laughs> No, I really do because everybody was giving me grief and they were mm -hmm. like, dude, what are you what are you doing? Yeah. Um, I think I have the DVD. Was that Dimension Extreme? They did one uh, back in the day, a Dimension Extreme release. Yeah. I, that's when I first saw it from Blockbuster. Right. I think I, I think that's how I own it. I'd have to uh I'd have to go through my shelves. I believe I remember mm -hmm. saying it though. But you had a really nice release. Yeah, that was the um I think it was the Beyond Genres the umbrella release so it's a really cool release and all these ones are, i'm going to be talking about today too i do have the physical release um for these with the uh with the exception of just one of them so i will be holding up the release oh it's so it's so insane that they couldn't legally press it on disc no for whatever <laughs> reason it's the first movie i'm going to talk about so i don't forget about it because it's the only one i don't have in front of me um and it's one of the more well-known ones with this list too i tried to pick there's a lot of kind of obvious movies that i could have picked so every time you do a list i'm sure you see this on the channel people are like oh yeah you didn't include that <laughs> crappy list or whatever like <laughs> Of course, not every weird movie ever made is on this list, but I wanted to show ones that I personally think that maybe uh, people talk about them or they're familiar with them, but never just like pulled the trigger on watching them. Um, and there's going to be, I know there's a couple on here that are going to be really divisive. And some of these are horror adjacent and not exactly straight horror. So I, I tried to bring you some goods here, Christian, and give you some interesting movies okay? well I'm, I'm very excited about that for the audience if they if they're not too familiar with you or your channel maybe maybe we've had some new people come along the planet chh uh i was gonna say train but i should say come into orbit because yeah. that makes more sense they if they if you guys never saw the first episode i did with justin he came on prop what was that april yeah, it was a few Met, months ago. It was a few. It feels like a year ago, mm -hmm. but he came on. We did the most disturbing movies ever, and it. I think if I was going to have like a top ten moments of the year, the number one moment is when Justin pulled out a movie <laughs> called Assholes, where I thought it was shit on their face, <laughs> and I literally had a uh, cardiac level two heart attack. On Dude, I've never seen you laugh that hard, man. <laughs> oh my god, it was the funniest thing. But we had a great time. We shed light on some of the uh, craziest movies ever, and your setup is, is new, fresh, and different. Do you want to give people uh, a little like what? Are, like I'm looking behind you, I'm seeing some cool things. I'm seeing the brain. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm seeing what's next to the brain. Is that a is that a alien? What is that? Are we talking about? Are we? What are we talking about on this shelf right here? Yeah, the brain right there. What's so that, that thing? That's what is actually uh, the basket case. Belial. That's Belial. It's a. It's one of the. You can actually get them on middle of beyond. It's one of the geeky tiki mugs. So it's a Belial mug, uh, tiki mug. That's what that one is. Very, then I got. Cool. Then I got Aylmer next to that. I love it. Yeah, and then I got the animatronics and stuff too. I got Art's the most recent edition. I got Art back there, the Party City one. 
Yeah, I saw him the other day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he looks good, man. Um, are you excited for Terrifiers three? Oh fuck yeah, dude! That's like but, my that and Nosferatu are my most like anticipated of the entire year. But Justin, I don't think you think it's actually going to surpass two. I think it's going to get close, but I don't think you think it can do it. I actually, I, I think yeah. you, I think you think it's going to come close, but you can't. <laughs> you got to admit, <laughs> you have to admit though that Terrifier two was pop like it changed the culture you Here's can't the, replicate that well let me ask let me ask you this because you might do this too I've, i do this with movies all the time what i'm trying to do i think in my head is not build it up to some um standard that's not going to be that, that i'm going to be disappointed in you know well it's hard to do that because they pump out shirts and 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 clo- and toys they pump the stuff out as if it's already a classic mm-hmm you know, I guess I think it, 101. it just depends on how far he's going to take this because he keeps on wanting to go, you know, more disturbing and more and more and more. And the levels that part two reached, it's going to be really hard. Like, that's just the kind of a light one of those lightning in a bottle movies. Right. That, I, but if there's anybody that could capture it again, it's going to be Damien Leone. And I think he knows that he can't just up the gore. He's going to have to bring make the lore worth it. Because this is this is the make it or break it terrifier. Right. We still don't know the lore. We still don't know the background. We still don't know what art is, how he, you know, where he came from. And we finally got some seeds in part two. So I think it has the it does have the potential to be the best one yet. It's just if everything is if if the fans don't cry about oh that's not what I wanted for arts lore oh I didn't want that you know whatever and if he kills that kid or not I think that's well, one of the biggest <laughs> debates too are you gonna be upset if he's the daddy because everybody kind of thinks that, that he's gonna be the daddy I think that would be too obvious right I think well, her dad did have a connection to it I think he knows I think her, her dad um uh, Sienna's dad knows where he came from and knows the lore I don't know if it's him or not I don't know. Yeah. Wouldn't that be too easy if it's just like, oh, it's her dad. And, you know, they set that up in the first movie. Yeah, that's what we expected. I feel well, like he's I mean, clever I, enough to not do that. I'm going to be really excited when they reboot it in 15 years and he's not going to be the dad. And right. they're going to pretend like the original Terrifiers never happened. Yeah, change things around a little <laughs> bit. But I think this will also cement if to anybody who says like, oh, you know, art doesn't have enough. He doesn't have enough movies. He doesn't have enough clout to become a horror icon. I think this movie, regardless if the movie's well-received or not, will make him a definitive horror icon you know what i i i i don't necessarily disagree with that i just i think to be a horror icon you got to go the distance yeah you know what i'm saying like to me freddie dominated the majority of the 1980s and after he went away after the mid 90s his stuff stayed in walgreens every year his stuff stayed in the move the uh you know he never went away and he, he was everlasting mm-hmm. to me. That's a horror icon. I think I do think art could do that and very well may do that. I just don't want to throw it out so fast. I get a little bit of pushback. Well, do you that. think it's the amount of films that has to be involved? I, I, I do actually, it's not the end all be all because I, 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 I wouldn't necessarily say that candy man. I think you have to check. If I made a, a checklist, let's say it's five boxes, I think you need to check four. There's not a whole lot of Candyman films, but I think Tony Todd checks a lot of boxes. And he's never gone away. He's still iconic. He transcends the movie itself. Mm-hmm. People know the Candyman, Candyman. They, they know that. Uh, I think he checks m- most of the boxes. I think art is going to check most of the boxes yet. I just, I think to me, I want to see him go the distance a little bit more. He has an interesting intro, obviously with uh, the all hollows Eve movie, which I saw that all hollows Eve well before terrifier was a thing. Mm -hmm. And I even remember reading in a magazine, it was probably horror hound or room org where Damien was interviewed. And he said, I think I'm going to make a movie about that clown in the movie because all people would tell me about is, hey, that creepy clown that was in that movie for 10 minutes. We we like that. Mm-hmm. We really like him. So that that is really cool. And you can't you can't uh, you can't fake that. That's organic, which I think would be a, a, one of the big checkpoints. Is well, the, aside from the movies, though, another thing that maybe you're missing or maybe not thinking about is another thing that definitely cements somebody as a horror icon is how much money they make. 
<laughs> and I and I know that Art the Clown, since they started releasing merch, just everything sells out always. Absolutely. So sometimes the market determines that <laughs> that status too. You know what I mean? You're you're absolutely right. But here's my only I feel like I'm the art the clown hater. I swear to God I'm not. But here's my here here's the other side of that coin. Let me let me give you another clown that was the flavor of the month and gone. You remember Twisty the clown from American Horror Story? Yeah. Was the next big thing at the time. They, I think if they would have made a movie or something, it's possible. But they didn't. They, they let didn't. him go. And now, go. now Twisty, some people may have maybe saying to themselves, oh, yeah, whatever happened to Twisty? I remember that. Or Stitches. Remember the movie Stitches? Yeah, I got Stitches. It's a great fucking movie. movie, man. So I, I, I want it to happen for Terrifier. I'm just not personally ready to throw that out yet. So, but I hope it, I think it'll happen. I really do. Um, but yeah, really quick before we get started, I know the audience is like, when are we getting started? But no, no, seriously, how, how are you handling your newfound success on YouTube? Oh, and, no, I'm serious. And your, um, your videos are doing very well. And you know, you got a lot of eyeballs on you right now. I mean, how are you, how are you handling all that? It's really, really great to have people honestly finally tuning into my channel but at the same time it's also makes me so much more apprehensive every time i want to it's so much pressure not like to there's so much pressure that like that you every video you have like is just going to be a fluke you know i had a couple videos that did well and if i want to break away and i'm going to talk about something else other than Corey feldman is it going to hit so i just want to reach that heights because i feel like once you set a bar of viewership and people liking you and finding you that it could just all go back to a <laughs> hundred views with the next video it's hard to find out what people want to watch that's the toughest thing so that's what i've been i have my next video planned out i know what it's going to be um and i hope it's good but i it's it's really satisfying to put so much work into something and actually have people enjoy it so it's it's really really great you know but at the same time i'm like fuck i just hope i can keep it up I, I I agree with you. I've been on that side of the coin on both ways where I've worked on something and it turned out really great. And I've also worked on something and it shit the bed mm -hmm. and um, it's tough, but you know, you got to do it. You have to take risks. You have to try things mm -hmm. and uh, you'll be surprised at what may hit that you're not, you're not expecting, you know, yeah. I, I I've done stuff on an anchor Bay DVD that I was like, this is, who cares about Night of Living Dead from Anchor Bay? Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of people did, you know, and then something else happened for me like that, too. It's a great feeling. And, you know, they say you're only as good as your last video, mm -hmm. which I don't know if it's necessarily true, but I think it's good to keep that in the back of your mind. That way you kind of go the extra mile every time. But I think if people aren't are, are familiar with you, are familiar with your videos, they'll see somebody who has a real knack for editing and storytelling and that's not something you can really just teach uh you got to have that and so i think you've got that and i enjoy uh your videos your 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 video on you know the first video you did on feldman was a good video but i i think the one you did when you saw him on concert was a better video i think you paced it a better mm -hmm. uh the first one was thrash metal but this one was a nice it was nice punk rock. Yeah. The first one was so explosive with the editing and stuff. It's remarkable and it's so impressive to watch. But the storytelling of the one you did at the concert was beautiful and it's entertaining, even if it's critical. And there's a gr nice tongue in cheekness about it. So I think I think what you're doing is just fantastic, and I think it's gonna I think it's gonna take you all the way. So I uh, I'm I'm very happy for you, and I'm excited to see uh, the next stuff you put out. I appreciate that. The main thing when you're making videos, I guess, is don't when you talk about finding success and, and it really anything is like the reason the that those videos even happened is because at the time I made them, I was super passionate to talk about it. So like whenever you make a video, it's easy. Let me just try to recreate the magic again. You kind of just can't do that. You just have to do whatever makes you happy. Like you can't you have to only talk about things that you want to talk about. So it, it looks like you're having fun. You know, because the audience is only going to have fun if you're having a good time and it doesn't feel forced or anything. So that's the that's what you got to that's what you got to do. Yeah, absolutely. You know? So now, guys, we're going to jump into 
the name of the video will reveal itself when you by the time you guys see it you, there's a name for this video but we're taking a left where everybody else goes right guys we are heading into the section of blockbuster <laughs> where the kids are not allowed where ratings don't exist and the mpaa passes out when they see 15 minutes of these movies justin's going to take us on a journey i'm sure we're going to learn a lot so everybody pull out the pen and paper get your notepads ready Justin, where are we going for the first strangest, most bizarre movies list of okay. 2024? Yeah, so we're the last one. A lot of those movies, you may have to cover your eyes. These ones are just going to more make you go like, what the fuck? You know, and just kind of take you back, take you into like this weird cartoonish journey of weirdness. Now, the first movie, like I said, and I, I don't know why I don't own this movie. Maybe you can throw up some graphics for this one since I don't have anything. But the first movie I want to start it out with that I still feel is not appreciated enough that is the one of the strangest yet most original horror movies of the last, I don't know, 15 years or so, 20 years. I forget when it was released. Kevin Smith's Tusk. Tusk. Oh, my God. I love yeah. this movie. Yes, I love it too, man. And it, it's unrecognizable as a Kevin Smith movie, aside from a couple of like goofy co comedic beats at the beginning with the, you know, the Star Wars kid and things like that. It feels a little Kevin Smith. But once, for those who aren't familiar with it, uh, Kevin Smith had a podcast with his producer that he made a bunch of movies with. And they basically read this article that turned out to be fake about this guy who was extremely lonely and he invited he put out a letter like an open like a um a want ad in the back of a paper that said i will let you move into my house free rent free room and board but you have to dress and act like a walrus the entire time that you're there that was his weird request and kevin smith and his buddy um read this letter aloud and they were like what if this was a movie what if what if this was real so they made it a reality and um they made this movie they basically asked the whole community of his podcast walrus yes or walrus no and the vo the vote was an overwhelming yes to make this walrus movie so you have michael park I there it is ladies and gentlemen i mean right. that the, the the visual of justin long and it's pretty much the whole premise of the movie you can't really spoil this movie justin long he has a podcast where he talks about weird fucked up things and he travels to go experience these weird people and he finds michael parks living in this mansion this beautiful home and uh he basically it's a body horror weird movie where he turns justin long physically into a fucking walrus and puts him in a tank and feeds him fish and <laughs> but see i even think you're i even think you're underselling it a little bit and i'm gonna tell you why yeah yeah go for it the scene where Justin goes to this guy's house that is the guy that, you know, does what he wants to with him. They're sitting, the scene where they're sitting down and just talking, I feel like I've got a gun pointed to the back of my neck the entire time. The dinner table scene? I, f I, dude. Yeah. When I first watched this movie, I was convinced people were just talking out of their ass. Mm -hmm. You know how it is, dude. Do not look. I'm a punk rock guy. If you tell me, dude, you got to see this movie. My initial reaction is fuck you. Mm -hmm. I don't have, I don't have to see shit. What do you know? The premise is laughable. It is. But I swear to God, Tusk, I can, if you like Tusk, like, I feel like I can tell that you like to live on the edge a little bit. But the people that say, oh, this movie's just do," I was like, dude, this is one of the most painful movies to watch for some reason. It physically makes me pain. Like, I feel pain. Mm -hmm. And the sounds Justin Long makes yeah. is disturbing. Dude, this is a great movie. And the best part about Tusk is when you watch the end credits, the podcast plays when they're talking right. about wouldn't it be funny if mm -hmm. look dude i'm not the world's biggest kevin smith fan i'm really not um i like fat kevin smith i think mm -hmm. most people do but you have to give it to this guy for making this movie it i it might be my favorite kevin smith film as mm -hmm. fucked up as that to say look i love clerks as much as the next guy or Jalen silent bob mm -hmm. i like strike back the most but dude I don't know. Tusk is fucking insane. You know what Tusk is? 
Tusk is the Kevin Smith movie for people who really don't like Kevin Smith. I put this is like Tarantino's Jackie Brown to where if if somebody says to me like Jackie Brown's my favorite Tarantino movie, I know that you're probably just not a Tarantino fan and he just made a movie that you found that you liked or whatever because it doesn't have all the hallmarks of a Tarantino movie. It has some. But the same thing goes with Tusk. You're not watching a, a Jay and Silent Bob fart joke, dick joke kevin smith movie if you didn't know this was a kevin smith movie you pro um you probably it would you wouldn't you just wouldn't know it you just watch it as a weird fucking horror movie that's why i try to urge i think a lot of people may not have seen it because they're like this is kevin smith doing this stupid fucking movie and the premise is so ridiculous but the movie hinges on yes the absurdity but the performance of michael parks he's fucking amazing in this movie and you buy into his character and then when you start transforming it like you said it's fucking horrific when <laughs> when justin long wakes up in that big empty room and he's in his cardigan sitting in that wheelchair and realizes his fucking legs are gone like that's when you realize oh fuck like it's this is a for real horror movie this guy is fucked you know like and it's brutal from then on it's mean there's no more funny business it's brutal and he's getting chopped up and turned to a walrus there and there's other moments in this movie that like for some reason are just so uncomfortable to watch but i don't want to talk about too much of them yeah we don't want to spoil too much of it but my my some of my favorite moments are the moments that are the most like mentally effective have nothing to do with the physic like the like the pain of the surgery or anything like that it's i I'll just say doghouse. Mm -hmm. The ending scene is so fucking wild, dude. It it's it does something to me and physically to it too, because you realize like somebody's life is never going to be the same. Like you're completely altered. You know, you're not the person you were before. Yeah, it's really crazy. That movie's ten years old now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Might be older. So I'm looking at the poster right here. I was gonna say if Kevin Smith made an A24 movie. Yep. But it isn't. It is an A twenty four. It's an it's an earlier A twenty four flick. Yeah. Stop. Stop. Mm -hmm. Don't you think this would be the best second sight box set of all time? I am begging for a good release of this movie, man. No, I'm serious though. That would be I, I mean incredible. It. That would be incredible, and they do to do a lot of A twenty four. Yeah, that would be amazing. Well, hopefully, hopefully they do that. So. Okay, cool. If I can help with visual aid, I'll pull it up on here. But I think you said you got most of these movies after this on uh, DVD. I just urge people to watch that one even if they don't like Kevin Smith. Because even if you don't like Kevin Smith, you can still like this if you're into weird horror movies. Dude, so. it's... it's Yeah. This would make my top 10 of 2014. Mm -hmm. I, I'm serious. Oh, and, yeah. you, know, you know what's so funny, dude? I, it's, it's like... I remember when I saw this. I saw this in like 2019 or 18. Mm -hmm. I think my wife was like, hey, that's that weird movie. And I was like, let's let's watch it because first of all, if anybody that, that doesn't like Justin Long, I mean, you can you can kiss my ass. Oh yeah, he's great. Number one, like who doesn't like Justin Long, right? But you know, we watched this movie, and I just remember looking at my wife when we got done. My wife, you could drop an atom bomb next to her; she don't get affected by nothing. Mm -hmm. She's dead on the inside. Um, she's not watching this. Who cares? But. We got done with that movie, and she was just like, "That was fucking disturbing." Mm -hmm. And I, and she never says that. It leaves you feeling very weird. You got Haley Joe Osmond also in it, and Genesis Rodriguez, who was uh, she was in um, a couple of uh, Eli Roth movies and stuff. So it's it's good. It'll leave you feeling a little little weird. Did this not get a, a theatrical release, or it was did. it very it got, limited? It, it got a limited release. I saw it in the theaters at Alamo Draft House. Oh, dude, you had to yeah. have been shitting bricks. Yeah, I was. I left the theater feeling very weird. I was like, I just feel weird after this movie. You know, Justin, how did you like Tusk? I cried in my car for six hours when I got. It did. I just left the fucking theater feeling like oh, I just feel icky after that. Yeah. All right, Justin, where are we going next, dude? So next. Uh, I'll try to I'll try to not talk too much about these because I'm I'm gonna get to rambling. So this next one, this is a, this is a podcast, dude. Let's right. make no mistake. You know, <laughs> um, this next one, this is from Kino Lorber, and I saw this. I think this is um I found out through this on I found out about this movie through the Terror Detective um Instagram page, which is an amazing, a great Instagram page. They she um, reviews the all these different movies and uh, shows clips and stuff. And I saw this weird clip. From a movie called I Bought a Vampire Motorcycle. 
and I screwed up when I opened this and I ripped the plastic on this. But this is a British horror movie from 1998. And it's a little more lighthearted, but it's got a lot of gore and it's got a really, really weird premise. Okay, so I bought a vampire motorcycle starts out with the guy. He's a member of the Hells Angels and he's doing a satanic ritual trying to summon some demon or some shit. And he ends up getting killed by some rival gang members and the spell or the incantation gets messed up and blood gets all over this motorcycle and the motorcycle itself becomes possessed in the way of like a maximum overdrive kind of oh wow deal. so throughout the movie this motorcycle this guy comes in town he buys it but he's un unknowingly buys this demon possessed motorcycle and this has all kinds of really crazy gags like a headlight turning into a fucking thing and biting people's you know arms off it throws out these spots Bikes and chops people's heads off it does all this really gory crazy stuff but it's a motorcycle um so it's very very weird it's kind of fun and uh it's just a really quirky weird little uh weird little movie there's a guy in the back who got impaled by the by the motorcycle flinging him off it's very weird but it's really silly and a lot of fun so this is probably how did you hear about this this is one that i heard on that instagram website um, I saw this really weird scene of the motorcycle with these spikes popping out and chopping people's heads off. Um, and it's very, very strange. It's good. It's a lot of fun. I'll have to add that one to the old list of Rue. Yeah, I wanted to pick some deeper cuts in this because there's a lot of weird movies that are out there, but I wanted to pick a little bit deeper cuts and try to push somebody to watch these smaller movies. All right, cool. I got that one so, wrote down. Yeah, it's I actually I think Christian, I think you'll really dig this. It's got kind of a, a cool Hells Angels biker punk rock kind of vibe, but it's also kind of funny. And it's British British. So it's kind of got like almost um an old school Peter Jackson feel to it. I know that's not British, but it's like he's from New Zealand, but it has that old school kind of zany feel to it. It's a lot of fun. Got some gore. It's it's good. Perfect. Next up, this one a lot of people may have heard of this one. And I'm aware of that, but maybe a lot of people haven't seen it. This is from the director. You've seen the movie Parents, right? With yeah, Dennis. with uh, Dennis Randy, 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 Randy. So this is the same director, and this is a movie called My Boyfriend's Back. Now this uh, is one of these ones that is horror adjacent, but it's Adam a Marcus. Movie. Oh, did he write it? He wrote it, and then Sean Cunningham sold it. <laughs> oh no, shit! Produced by Sean Cunning, Sean Cunningham. Interesting. I didn't know that Adam Marcus wrote that. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. And Henry Man, Harry Manfredini did the music for it. Yeah. So that's, this is that's when Disney, that's when Disney actually made decent shit. Yeah. You know, so this is a great movie. This, this guy who is in love with this chick, um, he gets killed during a gas station robbery and he comes back as a zombie, but he comes back and just like goes to high school in it. There's early appearances from, uh, uh Philip Seymour Hoffman. And a couple of other actors that are in this. I think uh, Matthew Fox is in this from Lost. He plays a high school student. The, the lead chick in this movie is also from Fright Night 2. I believe that's her. She's gorgeous. Um, but this movie is doesn't exist in our same world. It's very surrealistic and wacky and zany. And things happen in the movie that shouldn't happen in the real world. It's just right. very strange. Like they immediately accept this, you know, zombie uh into their school and it's really funny and super weird i hope people are familiar with this and i really want people to check it out because it's just a fun fucking weird Dude, movie i gotta buy that i have to You've buy never it. seen it i i haven't seen it since i haven't seen it in a dog's age i think is the expression it really has been that long i i had a vhs tape years and years ago yeah. i used to i remember watching it right before katrina um, mm -hmm. I had a block, I rented it from Blockbuster and I think that's, I either bought the tape from Blockbuster or whatever, and I haven't seen it since that long ago. Mm -hmm. And when I was watching a Jason goes to hell documentary, Adam Marcus talked about how he wrote this script and Sean, he told like, basically Sean was gui guiding his career cause he was best friends with Sean's kid mm -hmm. at the time. And Sean basically got that script sold for Adam, but he couldn't direct it. Adam was really sad that he couldn't direct the movie, but he hadn't helmed the project. 
and touchstone was not going to let him a first time director do that right mm -hmm. so that's why he directed jason goes to hell because they Sean gave him a was... jason movie but they wouldn't give him his silly boyfriend's back movie that's oh like... that was yeah but that was new line they were <laughs> yeah but it all worked out i'm glad that adam i love jason goes to hell so it's all good um but yeah i gotta man i gotta get that shit on amazon let me just see how much it costs right now it's really similar to uh lisa frankenstein when i saw lisa frankenstein which i love that movie I didn't care for it a whole lot. It was okay. I think Cole what you, Sprouse what you, kind of. What are you talking about? I think it was just Cole Sprouse just annoyed that I just wasn't buying him as that character. I just wasn't buying it. Something I need to see it again. I only saw it once, but it's almost the same fucking movie. He starts deteriorating and falling apart, and his girl has to like glue his ears back on, and he tries to eat his friends and stuff. It's it's so similar to my boyfriend's back. It's like not even funny, dude. Something's wrong. On Amazon, they want forty-four dollars. Oh, it's out of print. Let me Damn. see. They got, let me see. They got the DVD. Let's see. My oh yeah, because this back. is an old Mill Creek release from twenty sixteen. God damn it! I'm up Shit's Creek, dude. Out of print. I'm not paying forty-four dollars. Damn. That's, That's fine. That's fine. It's on Disney Plus, I think. Is it really? Yeah. That's hilarious. I'm pretty sure. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm pretty it's not super gory or anything, but there is some weird scenes in it. Oh, yeah. All right, where are we going? Where are we going next? How are you going to top that? So the next we have some movie. Like uh, this is probably the last. There's a couple that are. I'm just going to run through these because ever most people probably knew these, but I couldn't not include them. Okay, let's go. Let's go. I where still feel like there's people out there who have not seen this movie. First of all, how dare you flash that in front of me, you rat bastard, got son of a bitch. And everything. With the slip? Yeah, it's got this. It's like That's a Anchor Bay? Yeah. It's got the vinyl slip. And then the artwork is really cool because it's just all the characters from the movie. And you can see like the absolutely insane makeup work that went into this movie. Dude, it's nuts. It's like probably one of the... I mean, there's very few movies that I can think of that have this much like makeup effects. It's like one of the most big, the biggest makeup effects movie ever made. And it's like some obscure B movie with some of the best practical effects that have ever been done. Tell ever. the audience what happened to freaked. So I, I, I may not know a lot of the backstory about the distribution and stuff, but I do know that Alex winter wrote this movie and this was his baby. Alex winter um, directed this movie and I believe he wrote it. He wrote it and directed it um, directed by Tom Stern and Alex Winter. Um, it is a masterpiece, in my opinion. It is a masterpiece movie in the way of like something like Basket Case three or four, like with the level of weirdness and characters and zaniness. But you basically have uh, Randy Quaid, who is a. Uh, um, mad genius genius who makes this serum or slop or something that turns people into freaks so all these characters that you see on this movie were once just normal people right um, mr t is in this movie keanu reeves is uncredited as the wolfman you have mr t you have dennis quaid alex winter uh brooke shields like the cast is kind of crazy and right. it's basically this group of freaks who are trying to get unfreaked um and it's just absolutely, it's absolutely incredible. And so it was going to the movie theaters, but something happened and the movie got pulled. Like mm. if you saw it in the theater, you saw it on its opening day mm. and that was it. Yeah. But something happened. That movie got pulled. And then the physical media releases, for some reason, dude, they come and they go. That DVD yeah. might've been around for a bit because that was Anchor Bay, but there was a Blu-ray of Freaked and dude you gotta pay yeah it's like 100 bucks or something maybe even more you gotta pay to play but i hear that alex winter is really pushing hard for a release for that movie and they have a transfer for it and everything so i, th I do think we'll get another release of that but um that's, I know got, that's got vinegar syndrome written all over it right oh if this was like a vs um the vsu bro and, i mean with the whole Quit playing. case Quit uh, playing. Can, you, can you imagine the artwork oh! <laughs> It would be fucking incredible. I people have to see this movie. If you're into practical effects and you like just a, you need a weird movie that's like a circus cartoon magic carpet ride, this movie will check all of your boxes. The cast is just insane. William Sadler, Randy Shield, uh Randy Randy Quaid, 
um, uh, Bobcat Goldthwait. It's it's incredible, and so, the, the special effects alone are worth a ticket of admission. So the, I found out about that movie because. Do you ever watch Cinemassacre, James Rolfe? You know who that yeah, guy yeah. is. Mm -hmm. So he was doing a show called Rental Reviews, which was really fun. Although yeah, I some love of that the, show. yeah, I got I interviewed uh, Tony from Hack the Movies oh, on yeah. my channel. I interviewed mm -hmm. him a few years ago. Um, but they covered that movie, mm -hmm. and I was it, it the way they described it. It seemed like it was one of those. To me, I I'm I'm convinced that there are like fifteen or twenty parallel universe movies that somehow slip through the dimensional cracks mm -hmm. and i feel like freaked because it was on youtube that's where i watched it yeah. i feel like freaked is one of those movies it really doesn't exist but mm -hmm. it slipped through the dimensional cracks and it somehow it happened yeah you know and isn't that crazy how a movie like if to those who have seen it and know uh, like we're all pretty movie obsessed and we look into how movies are made how movies are produced the work that it takes to make movies when you watch this movie you can see like it the painstaking ungodly amount of work that it took to put this together on a smaller budget and to make it work is just it's unbelievable that it even exists it, it truly is it's one of the most you talk about people talk about the thing or you know another movie i'm going to bring up here these practical effects movies for whatever reason this movie is never ever in lists of like the best practical effects of all time and it should be at the top of all those lists you know it's really just insane i really quick just for the audience to get a little bit of information on this so let's talk about the home video for freak for a second on july 12 2005 Anchor Bay and 20th Century Fox released a special edition two-disc DVD featuring extra materials, including deleted scenes, audio commentaries, behind-the-scenes footage, and two short films from Alex Winter and Tom Stern, the 15-minute film noir parody Squeal of Death and a black-and-white skit titled NYU Sight and Sound Project. That's your release you got right there. Yeah, it's packed. It's packed with features. So then... On 2013, Anchor Bay released and Stars Inc. released the movie on Blu-ray. The Blu-ray does not include any of the bonus features from the DVD. Oh, Both the Blu-ray and DVD are out of, print, out of print and considered collector's items. The film is also currently unavailable on digital streaming. So if you're going to have Freaked on physical media, the release you have is the one I have. So anybody out there that's got the Blu-ray, that they're a chump. Damn, so you can't even watch? This movie is like unwatchable. Well, I think it's on YouTube. On YouTube. Yeah, that, you know? what a shame, man! It this movie has to be rescued from obscurity. It's a classic. It's an it's an unsung classic. It really is. But see, this is why I've been covering a lot of DVD stuff lately on the channel. Mm -hmm. The Blu-ray literally just has the movie. I, that's crazy. I actually thought it had all the features. That's crazy. But check this out. Complications. Let me give you the Cliff Notes edition. After several poor test screenings, Fox chose to pull the film from a nationwide release and cut its advertising budget, leaving no money for commercials or newspaper ads. Freaked had its official premiere at the Toronto Film Festival on September 11th, 93. Despite initial positive critic... <laughs> It's just so funny that Freak prelated the Toronto Film Festival. Despite initial positive critical response, the film opened October 3rd you ready for this? October 3rd, 93 in the United States on only two screens, making wow. making seven grand in its first weekend. Seven grand. It grossed less than 30,000 during its theater run and was released on VHS on April 20th. Anymore. So, That's a crime. That's just a crime. Isn't it weird, though? Like they had poor test screenings, but who the hell are they bringing into these test screenings? Number one, yeah, normies. And number two, why they they put it why why even put it out in two theaters mm -hmm. it's just weird i'm i wonder i'm sure it did really good on vhs and that probably i mean i'm i don't know if it gives me that information but i, don't I think know. i saw it on cable back in the day that's that's really it's just too bad because it's actually really funny and well written too like it's really clever really clever yeah, it says Freak garnered a minor cult following that has grown in the late 2010s and early 2020s with internet creators such as Cinemassacre, Red Letter Media, and Michael Swain making retrospectives about the film. I can tell a lot about somebody if they're 
a Cinemasker guy or a Red Letter Media guy, and you just look like a Red Letters Media. I love guy. Red Letter Media. Those guys are, dude. Mike and Jay. Uh, but see, I like I like them too, but I'm a Cinemasker guy. Yeah, you know what I mean. Well, I you, you're a, you're into a lot of games too. I'm not uh, I'm not a gamer, so he ha he's pretty game heavy. But I tell you what, the best is, it's the best of the worst. Yeah, I love the best of the worst. <laughs> they covered spookies on the best. Yeah, they've covered spookies. They've covered, they've covered some great stuff. See, Justin, if we can get our channels big enough to where we can make some real money, you know, we need to like get a spot, like a hub. Everybody's moving to Texas. That's what they say. Get a warehouse like the Red Letter Media guys. Let's, dude. We we can carve our own spot on the internet. I know. You know what I mean. Got to make it happen, buddy. But Those for right now, we got to use StreamYard. <laughs> like, I want I want the chairs where we can show up and sit down and talk and with the boom mic over us. And uh, uh, they have the boom. warehouse where each little area is set up for their different shows, like Best of the Worst and the reviews and half all in the bag. All, yeah, the half in the bag, the VHS setup. I love I love their I love their stuff, man. All right. Where are we going next, dude? How are you going to top free? Pay 50 bucks for this and buy it. Well, I'm gonna try um, to find it at the shops. You know, how I got I'm thrifty. I feel like uh, now this one I feel like everybody knows about, so I, we don't need to go too deep in this. But I, I can't, we can't have a weird movie video without talking about Brain Damage, which is my personal favorite Frank Hannon Frank, Lauder Frank Hannon Lauder movie. And this it, is the, it's a respectable answer. Mm -hmm. You got to have Brain Damage, an alien that crashes to Earth, takes control of a human host as a parasite, and makes him. Um, talks a bunch of shit. Talks <laughs> shit. Makes his host kill people. He's, you know, he's got an amazing uh, horror host voice. Hi, Brian. It's so good. It's Dude. a good movie. Late eighties. I think it was eighty eight. Yeah, but it's so great. But it's so surreal. What makes it so weird is like the cr the creature just looks like a wrinkly blue dick. It does. attaches onto the back of of the host's neck and secretes this drug that makes you kind of trip balls and then you end up doing things that you like under the spell and killing people for this little demon it's almost this movie is extremely uh dreamlike it just has this blue this wash of blue surrealistic dreamlike uh, vibes that just drench the whole movie and it's just such a dream man it's just a fever dream of a movie and i i love it i love it it's so good same director as basket case frankenhooker bad biology um, those things. This, I think, is his best filmmaking that he's ever done. Was that your introduction to the great Frank Hennenlotter? Um, I I think it may have been. I can't remember if it was that or Basket Case. Me and Garrett, um, Born to be Rad, did a whole uh, Frank Hennenlotter um, show. When we were, I couldn't really remember exactly what I saw first. It was either Basket Case or Brain Damage. Um, but that movie is such a classic and it's so well made, man. Like if you're not into the wackier shit like basket case or Frankenhooker, maybe that's a little silly brain damage could be silly, but a little bit more serious of a tone and it's just fucking weird, man. Yeah. It's so strange. Yeah. That's a great one. I don't hear people talk about brain damage as much. Obviously mm -hmm. they'll talk about uh basket case a lot. I think my favorite's Frankenhooker. Mm -hmm. I like that one a lot, but I love brain damage. I yeah. love that one so much. I'd put that above like the basket case sequels and things like that. Oh yeah. I put that above basket case for sure. I think when we did the ranking, I think brain brain damage was my number one, but very, very cool. And yeah. you got the replica over there. Who made that replica? Uh, that was DWN or down productions. DWN oh, with, productions. Yeah. I know. It makes them. a lot of cool mask and stuff, kind of cartoonish and stuff, but somebody rehauled it when I, after I, when I bought it, somebody they had already the brain. They they rehauled Aylmer and like added different teeth and repainted it and stuff. So it's not exactly uh, DWN's work, but um, yeah, it's a really really cool. Very piece. cool. Where are we going next, man? Now this is the last of the mainstream stuff before we start to get a little weird. Okay? I wouldn't even call this mainstream. Well, it's mainstream to horror fans, like okay. deep cut horror okay. fans. It's mainstream okay. to guys like us. Eh, we've heard of brain damage. We've okay, okay. And you probably heard of this too. But as I was thinking of the Brian Usna stuff. I just got to thinking about the shunting scene and the premise and the setup of society. And I can't think of another movie like it. It's a one of a kind body horror creature feature with a cool premise, weird direction, weird director, 
It's slimy, it's sloppy, it's gross, but it's not just all about the gore. It's about the creativity and the weirdness of the story. This society of people that almost consumes the poor, this elite group of people who literally absorb the pores around them to the point yeah. where they're just a big, mucky, conjoined mess. I love that um, movie that so much. That shunting scene. If you need to, if you need a push to see a, this movie, Society, just Blood go to hit. YouTube and look at. <laughs> it's so good. Just look <laughs> at the shunting scene. The shunting scene from Society. It's like a minute and a half of the weirdest shit you've ever seen. Um, it's so trippy. You know, it's so fucking trippy. That yeah, that movie is in a category all of its own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. God, you got the early release of that. Yeah, this is the first um, Arrow version. And what's crazy is I bought it off eBay. You might not be able to see it, but the fucking day it came in the mail, you can see my dog when he was still a puppy. Yeah, you can't see it. Chomped on it the day I got it in the mail, and this thing was mint, bro. Pete? Yeah, little Pete. Yep. Oh, man. He chewed it up, but it's a really nice release. I'm hope I will. I imagine we'll probably get a 4K of this. Um, at some point yeah one thing i'll give one thing i'll give arrow credit for is they're not they're not uh pumping out their reissued stuff as fast as scream factory is they're yeah. kind of they're kind of letting it drip out a little bit yeah but the, the irony is now everybody's like man where the hell is reanimator I know. you know where the hell is the house movies on 4k now mm -hmm. like so everybody ever at this point everybody's ready for the, all that stuff so the reanimator was announced wasn't it but then like it just disappeared well i don't know if it was announced officially you know how oh, those yeah. things go you know i could be wrong but that's insane that that hasn't got a 4k but yeah that society release is really nice i have a stand the standard version but yeah, you know, those original chunky box uh arrows were mm -hmm. You know, those are collectible. I have the brighter animator like that, but that's before they got the bulletproof boxes. Yeah. Well, what this what this movie does a little bit that I felt made it stand out in the weird category is you have the gore, you have the practical effects, but things just aren't right with the way they do effects. Like the scene in the shower where you're seeing one perspective of somebody, like somebody's legs will be facing the wrong direction or their heads on the wrong side of their body. It's really right. just weird, like but dream logic. You could almost, you could almost, you know, you know, say that those movies, like you could watch that after Freaked and feel like you're still in the same neighborhood. <laughs> right. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. And I love when the, when the practical effects aren't just gore, but you have full on body suits where you have a, a, a full animatronic or a full prosthetic. This isn't just like somebody, like a lot of gore, people are getting their arms cut off. It's no, like four bodies joined together, undulating like jello that's alive. It's just very unsettling the yeah. way the effects are done and shot. That's a, yeah, that's a great movie. I love, Brian doesn't even call it a horror film himself. He's like, yeah, it's not a horror film. It's, it's just, it's just a weird movie. Right. It is. <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of, it's hard to, to put in that horror category. That's why I was saying like some of these are horror adjacent, but they're just fucking weird. Yeah. So that's a great um, pick. I love that movie. I love it. I love it too, man. It's, it's kind of one of those movies that people probably know about, but I still feel like it's not on the top of the heap when people talk about those weird movies. It's just, no, it yeah. should be. Um, and then this one now, as we move in, this is going to be from Brandon Cronenberg. I think one of the most exciting new directors, David Cronenberg's son. He put this out a few years ago, and this is Possessor. I remember you you liked this quite a bit when you saw it, didn't you? You reviewed this one, I think. I don't know if I reviewed it, but yeah, I'm ex I, I think I think uh, Brandon's time is now, and I mm -hmm. think his dad has gone the distance, and I have enjoyed Brandon's stuff. like. I want to like crimes of the future so effing bad. It's a weird one, isn't it? Um, but there's something about crimes of the future that I can't. There's a disconnect. It's slow and it's like there's nothing human to grab onto. It's like a whole different world and a whole different universe. Do you remember um, a movie he did called Crash? Oh, yeah. Same they, thing. Yeah. It's like a movie that fetishizes getting in car wrecks right and people being turned on i swear it's being weird for weird sake i don't mm -hmm. get it yeah. although i do love that it's got robert california from the office in it yeah but I, i've it's the same disconnect with crimes for the future i i'm not there with those movies yet maybe someday i will but mm -hmm. i think i think his kid is gonna have his finger on the pulse 
with these movies. I feel like he's more hard sci-fi. David Cronenberg tries to almost with every movie create like this alternate reality, kind of like the RoboCop alternate reality, the Toxic Avenger where you're not, it's like, it's, you can tell we're in a city that looks like New York, but it's, it's the things that are happening in the world is something that would happen in like a dream or a nightmare, not in reality. So there's not a lot of like our, like if you're looking for connective tissue to like the viewer to like the real world, you're not going to get that. And maybe that's what you're feeling that dis that disconnect that you talk about. Yeah. Cause crimes of the future is like a whole another level of where is this? What is this? What are they doing? That, um, that, that scene with Vigo Mortensen in the beginning where he's just, I don't know, dude. It's visually, I'm like, what the fuck is it? Yeah. But I'm, I don't, I don't know. There was a piece of me that almost thought to include that, but I wanted to do Possessor more because I feel like it's more cohesive and the story is a little more um, interesting because basically what you have is you have Andrea Rose Riseborough, who is fucking incredible. She is such an amazing actress. And uh, Jennifer Jason Lee, she works for this company that allows you to essentially um, possess somebody else's mind and make them control they she works for a company that basically does these high profile hits so at the beginning of the movie she absorbs into this woman's mind and just fucking kills somebody and then they pull themselves out of that host body and then she's just andrea riseborough but when she goes to work and lays on the table and does the transformation she becomes somebody else kills somebody and then bounces back out and they don't you're they it's like you made somebody else commit a murder they, right. and nobody else is, is is none the wiser but the crux of this story is she meets a guy who d isn't not as easily overtaken by her um he can kind of feel that he's being possessed and fight back on it a little bit and he's not able to be taken advantage of but the the sequences that what what makes it so weird is it's not just like they put like a an electric elect like a, a helmet on you and there's some electricity and it's like, and then you get taken over. There's this really weird, like melting wax transformation right, sequence that makes right. it very fucking weird. Um, and there's some disturbing scenes. It's really fucking good. If you're, if it's a little bit of a slow burn, you could say, but uh, possessor is fucking awesome. David Cronenberg's son, watch it. The, all these movies are so kind of hard to describe because they are so weird. So they're all, all these movies are kind of hard sells. You know what I mean? So when you're watching this video, whoever's watching this video, if something sounds interesting, just watch the trailer, read about it, look at some images. And because these, these movies are not normal plot driven movies that you can kind of just describe beginning, middle and end They're experiences, you know, they're like fucking fever dreams. Yeah. That second set release is nice. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And now we're going to start to get into some movies that people are probably just going to either hate. Like this, these are the movies that people are going to be like, oh, what the fuck? I can't wait. So next one up is Darren Aronofsky's highly divisive mother. Did you see this movie? No, I haven't seen that. Oh, Christian, you got to see it. Please tell me about it. The basic setup of the movie is a Christian allegory. It's the Bible, basically. Hold okay. on really quick. Darren Aronofsky. Aronofsky. Um, Darren yeah, Ar Aronofsky, Black Swan, Requiem for a Dream. Did he do uh, the one where Brendan Fraser plays the obese guy? He did. Yeah. Okay, I like that movie. I love that movie. I love that movie. Have, have you, you seen, seen Requiem? Have you seen some really quick, really quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you seen some of those funny ass memes that people make where they oh, take the it Brendan says, floating? I don't know. <laughs> it was like. <laughs> <laughs> There's that one. <laughs> When he's binge eating. Well, there's that no, there's that one that says when when mom's cooking dinner and she puts the hot dogs in the macaroni <laughs> and he floats. The one, yeah, the one where it says where you decide to you decide you want to be healthy and you exercise and eat clean all day. Then at eleven thirty p.m., oh, he binges. <laughs> oh, that movie's so disturbing. Like some of the even sexual the ones are the best too, dude. <laughs> When He's you tell a... her, when you tell her you're about to go, and she's <sighs> what's crazy is that scene in the movie is so dead serious and like monumental <laughs> at that point in the movie, and everybody made like the shit tier the goofiest memes, dude. I love the internet. It's like, god damn it, that was Brendan's moment, and people are memeing it all to hell. But you're right, they are fucking hilarious. <laughs> 
<laughs> the, the, the hot dogs and the macaroni for <laughs> Those did hit, though. You know they hit. The wainies, the little smokies. <laughs> that motherfucker said, <laughs> I love that. Brendan oh, Fraser is so good. You know, let's get back on track, but I want to say, did Brendan Fraser really go away or was he just doing a bunch of shit that nobody was watching? He was kind of going the um, John Cusack, uh, Christian Slater, Bruce Willis, like all when they were all just doing a bunch of shit that was going like straight to red box. They were doing a lot of those. So Brendan was kind of lopped up in that. He yeah. had a really hard go at it. He had a really bad back injury, a divorce. You know, he had a hard go at it. So I'm glad yeah. to see and he, my... he aged normal like a normal person, but like yeah. he was America's heartthrob. Mm -hmm. Like when he did a when he did the mummy, dude, he everybody was at everybody was wanting to be in a Brendan Fraser movie. Like he was the guy. Oh, in dude, 1999. He, he was like ripped and like remember even that stupid movie George of the Jungle, he was like shredded. crazy shredded and that was ripped. 97 too. Yeah. 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 That like, was his God time. Damn. That was his time. Mm -hmm. You know, he had his time. And I'm hoping I want them to release that Catwoman movie just so I can see Brendan Fraser in it. I know. I can't just believe release the goddamn that. thing. You're gonna put out Madam Webb, but you're not gonna put out Catwoman. <laughs> I know you had Michael Keaton returning as Batman and Brendan Fraser and all this shit. And you just anyway, talk to me about mother. What is mother about? So it's basically take a sip. Go ahead. Take a sip with this one. I don't, it's not, you can't really spoil it. Anybody who's familiar with like just basic Bible. If you went to Sunday school, you'll know the story of the movie, but basically you have an artist and a, and a homemaker. You have Javier Bardem, who is kind of like the surrogate, like, god the creator and you have um what's oh, a cult no no okay. you they they the, the the movie that you 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 know that something has happened the house is burned and regrows again and you have jennifer lawrence and you have javier bardem she represents sort of mother earth purity okay um, you know she's gorgeous she's beautiful in a white dress floating around the house she's fixing up this old house house and you realize that javier bardem is like kind of like the creator and she is Mother Earth, and he creates, and he's writing, and he's always coming up with these new writings. And then people start to show up at the house uninvited. At first, it's Ed Harris. He's a doctor. And then he starts acting very strange. He starts feeling this weird pain on his side, and he has, like, where his rib is, and then his wife shows up. And then a few minutes later, both of their, their sons show up. Mm -hmm. And then a few minutes later, more people start to show up and more and more mm -hmm. and more. And all of a sudden, their house is overrun into by hundreds of people that are, you see people in like war fatigues and you see murders and you see people sacrificing people. And then there's a baby involved. And you realize this house represents the entire kind of history of the world all happening in her perfect house oh, but shit. it becomes the anxiety of this movie is like nothing i've ever felt like uncut gems um level of anxiety this movie once it starts and it grips a hold of you it doesn't let you go and it i've there's been very 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 few movies where i feel this uncomfortable in a way that i think only darren aronofsky can go this slow unraveling kind of like he did with black swan where by the end of the movie, the tension is almost so it's almost too much to bear. And it's gets extremely disturbing and weird. This is a movie that is almost impossible to describe. And even as it's unfolding, you're still like, what? I gotta watch um, this. Dude, it is unfucking believable. It's Do a you, masterpiece. Are you a Jennifer Lawrence guy? Depending on the movie, I think she's great. No, no, I just mean, come on. This, oh, the, yeah. this is the locker room. I saw I saw the fappening photos, man. The fat whoa, whoa, what are you talking about? Uh well, I mean, there was a big controversy about a, her bunch of uh she iPhone wearing... photos. She wasn't wearing any clothes. She oh, they're on yeah. Yeah, she's full nude. You can cut that if you want. Yeah, she's full nude. No, on it's, it's fine. It's fine. I mean, oh yeah, she's fucking stunning. And she's like her the most beautiful I've ever seen her look in this movie. She's like angelic. Well, she really won me over on her hot ones episode where she oh yeah, ate, she's cool. She, as ate hell. The she ate the chicken wings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she just oh, yeah. seemed, but she seems like she's like she hasn't gotten to that because you know right now there's this big thing with Blake Lively. Everybody's just like I'm. You, I'm sure you've seen the clips. Yeah. 
dude. Mm -hmm. And she, she seems like the opposite. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think she was getting really overexposed there for, for a while, and she did a good job of kind of pulling back. You get the sometimes these stars, like you get like the Chris Pratt, The Rock, um, uh, uh, Kevin Hart, where it's just like overexposure, where they're in just every movie for fucking years. And I feel like people just got kind of annoyed with Jennifer Lawrence because she was in everything there for a minute. And just she was, away. she did what well, she was in those, uh, the Hunger Games, hung, Hungry, yeah, Hunger Games. My wife loves them movies. I think like, every broad I, loves them movies, though. This movie right here, I <laughs> it kind of just disappeared like a fart in the wind and nobody talks about this movie this movie's a fucking masterpiece if you so, can get so, through it so what's the word to describe the movie it sounds like the word is anxiety anxiety yeah anxiety. But see, i don't i don't like that like i like taking those like i in in real life anxiety is the i think anxiety is as bad if not worse than depression i don't know would you agree yeah. with that sure and in and this movie definitely feels that because you you the beginning of the movie she's restoring she's painstakingly restoring this home which is basically her tending to the earth right right that's the allegory and then as people start flooding her home breaking shit it, it's impossible to describe this movie but people start forming their own religions with inside this home <laughs> they, they perform like every sect of the world is represented every time she goes to a different room there's a sacrifice going on or there's literally people in like world war ii in every room like she's like get out of my house what are you doing here get out of here nobody leaves more people show up and more people show up i gotta and see then this. javier bardem starts to love all these people worshiping him because they're there to see him they want to witness god they want to witness the creator um and it shows how religion can cause people to do horrible things you know in the name of religion it's fucking wild oh dude tell me about it yeah it's crazy um where are we going now you brought the room down what's going what are we doing next so yeah so we have five more five more movies um this is another movie that i beg people to see this is an alex garland film and, the guy and who nobody did, and nobody listened to you and nobody listens to me <laughs> nobody listens to me and so i'm just gonna keep preaching okay. the world of annihilation I got, dude i gotta admit the cover of that ha like looks like a marvel has, movie that has pass and gold mm -hmm. enamel Oh, just yeah. by the cover. So you're going to have to sell me on Annihilation. Because the last time I watched a movie called Annihilation, it had Mortal Kombat in front of well, it. Well, you know what they're trying to do here is make this look like a like a, um, like a cool sci-fi, the new sci-fi thriller with Natalie Portman. That's not what this movie is. This is a cerebral, weird, quiet, creepy sci-fi movie. Um, basically, you have um what's this this what's this guy's name he's in everything now um oscar isaac he gets back from a mission but he's not quite right he's natalie portman's um actually he's he disappears right okay she's married he's married to natalie portman he goes on this mission he disappears she's trying to cope with his loss or whatever and they've he disappeared in this thing called the shimmer it's an area that all these scientists they've built these um, space stations right out, not space stations, these stations outside of it to absorb what they're calling a shimmer. It's this massive dome that look, kind of looks like an oil slick, how it shimmers with all those different colors. Okay. And it's absorbing this entire area and it seems to be growing. And when people enter this shimmer, they don't come out or they come out all fucked up and weird. So Jennifer Jason Lee grabs a group of people including natalie portman a group of scientists these aren't just like crazy military people they're trying to figure out what this shimmer and what is happening inside of the shimmer that's changing the it's changing things like it's mutating things so when you enter they start to notice for instance they see a deer and he pops his heads up and his and his antlers have like flowers growing out of them so it's almost like the earth and creatures and all organic matter are somehow joining into one thing within this shimmer. So once they enter this dome, they start to see creatures and flowers and vegetation and things that just should not be combinations of animals, combination of plants and creatures and monsters and these crazy there's there's a scene in annihilation and i if people who've seen this movie know the the bear scene um it's one of the creepiest creature designs i've ever seen some of the creepiest sound design i've ever seen um 
and it turns into this this bizarre realm of science fiction horror and there's never been anything like it that i've seen um alex garland is the same director who did ex machina he did men i know you liked men quite a bit <laughs> it's the same director um he's got a really unique vision and this movie is just so overlooked um i love the movie men for the record i real i know i really do yeah it's weird dude there's a scene in this movie i don't want to spoil a lot of shit, but for instance, there's a scene where they cut this guy open because he's like, something's moving inside of me. Something's inside of me. And they cut his belly open and all of his intestines are like moving as if they're eels in his stomach. And he's like, what the fuck's going on? Because everything, the body, the organic matter is changing in different oh, ways. God. Dude, it's, it is terrifying and it's so bizarre. And like I said, they try to make this cover look like it's a Marvel movie or something to sell it. And it's so much more than just your average sci-fi movie. It's Man, they didn't do any favors with it. No, it's incredible. Jennifer Jason Lee's great. Natalie Portman's great. It's very dark. It's very weird. Um, it's great. It's amazing. Cool. I I'm highly at, recommend I'm it. A, yeah, I, I will definitely get on that. Now, next, this is when everybody turns the video off. Okay. Okay. I'm excited. This is Skinnamarink. No, for real. What's your next pick? No, that's my next pick, brother. I am such an advocate of Skinnamarink. Me and my buddy did an hour long motherfucker, dude. Me and my uh, me and my cousin Jason <laughs> did an episode of our short lived podcast. <laughs> we talked about this this movie for an hour, and I've watched it a couple times since then. You you hated it. You hated let, me, it. Let, oh, let me 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 talk to you for a second, okay? I I I I think about it a lot. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I saw the film. Here, let me give you the story about Skinner Marink because I'm I'm really excited to, to to talk about this. I'm actually really glad you picked this. It's one of the most hated movies of the mm -hmm. 21st century. Divide. I I, let me. I'm gonna let you cook. Then I'll get my take. And so when I heard the. The, I heard about the movie. I told my wife about it. I said, Sydney, I, they're saying this is one of the scariest, most insane things ever made. And she's like, whatever. So we put the movie on. I, I will say this for sure. It was like midnight. We get ready to settle in. We're just, let me, let's just put it on. If it's really good, we'll, we'll finish it. The first five minutes, I, I don't even think I could sit down. Mm -hmm. I was like, what the fuck is happening? It was like a, it was like a, it was that feeling of taking a bottle rocket or a, um, uh, one of those big things you light up at the end of the, uh, New Year's, the big bombs that you put, the uh, artillery shells, whatever. You light those, you put the bucket over it, then you back up and you wait. Like I was, that's what the feeling that I was having, just waiting for something for the bomb to go off. Probably about 20 minutes into it, Sydney was just like, all right, if nothing's going to happen, just turn it off. So we turned it off and I tried to go to bed. Okay. It was like midnight, 1230, 1245. I woke up at like 340 AM mm -hmm. and I was just, was like, oh, gee, come on, gee, it's me. yeah, no, seriously. I was hearing that in my head <laughs> and I got up. They're in the other room. And I, mom. yeah. Where's mom? Dude, that shit got stuck in my head. I'm not even kidding. So. I get up and I wish I would have story archived this because I was like, I, it was like, I want to document this. So I was just going, I was on Instagram sharing my stories. I'm like, it's like 4 a.m. I can't go to sleep and I can't stop thinking about this damn skin ring. So I finished watching the movie in here in this room back when I still had my uh, plasma TV, which I got to say that that movie looked really good on a plasma. But anyway, I sat there in the dark, pitch black room. I finished the movie. And the truth is, when I got done with it, there was a part of me that says, okay, I, I have to hate this. I, I, I mean, I have to. Nothing happened. I talked about it on You Need to Hire a Podcast and things like that. But I'm going to be honest with you, Justin. I think the movie went over my head. Mm. I don't think I got it. Yeah. Because I would hear people talk about this movie and they would say, no, 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 no. These kids are stuck in limbo. Right. And I was like, they're stuck in, in like a, well, nothing's ever fully. 
it's Here's like the, the it's like the further a little bit in uh, Insidious. Only theirs feels like a moment in time, right? Or something. Am I There's right? There's never a full face on screen. There's never real full on dialogue. This movie is like it's um it's not found footage, but it feels like it. This this movie is like um the space between dreaming and being awake you know that weird half awake feeling where you're not all the way asleep oh absolutely you're not fully awake and you can hear sounds that are being perceived differently because you're like tired or you're falling asleep or something and you're a fly on the wall observing a situation that you shouldn't be seeing so it's not filmed like a narrative it's filmed as if somebody's hiding behind a couch watching somebody else experience something Right. You know, it's not it's not like you're 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 a fly on the wall watching uh it's not like a normal movie. It's like a liminal space. To anybody who's ever watched those liminal space videos like the back rooms videos which I am obsessed with. I've watched hours and hours of these back rooms videos. Have you seen the one, the are you talk about the ones where you see the ball going down the pit and you hear the I've been here 60 years and I'm still not bored. There's and, absolutely no. nothing. A back room about? video is a POV where you're it got it's so hard to describe you'll be dropped into a abandoned office building and you go from corridor to corridor and every door oh. is open it, it it appears that people should be here but they've left the space for some reason like, so why wait, isn't anybody wait up is there a difference between liminal spaces in the back rooms because like to me uh, back rooms take place in these liminal spaces but so you so, can have so the the back rooms are like the weird places where it almost looks like a water a water slide ride those are the water got, rooms though they have water rooms too <laughs> and there's some rooms where there's like it looks like an office building but there's a foot of water and right. then there's this yeah, right. I'm all about that stuff. But you're I talking, but the ones you're really about are the ones that are the office buildings where there may be, or like a hotel. You know, those feelings, like you know, when you walk into a, um, like a big giant ballroom, but you're yeah. like after hours at a hotel and right. all the seats are pushed away, oh, and it's a big yeah. vacuous open room that's shouldn't be scary, but for some reason it is. Right. And that's what, like what Skinnamarink did to me is you have to really, first of all, when you watch this movie, you kind of have to be prepared that you're, you don't have like a main character. There's not a character arc. There's not a, there's not a three act structure. You, it's a vibe. You're just in a dream. You're not right. looking for answers. The, the answers that you're given are probably not what you're going to what not what you're asking for. And you may be unsatisfied, but you will not be able to stop thinking about this movie because it, it, not everything is spelled out for you. And to be honest, the director made this movie and probably knew fucking 75% of people were going to hate it because like you said, you'll watch a close up of a wall and you're not really looking at the wall. That's just the perspective that you happen to have. What you're really looking for in this particular scene is what's going on in the background. Where are the feet moving? Where, where did that shadow go? Where is that voice coming from? And then it starts playing with time where you realize like, okay, bye, mommy. You're going to work. And then somebody will walk through a door and it's been two weeks. Or, you know, people disappear. Rooms disappear. Windows disappear. You know, you'll go into the same room and now it's a different color or the, the windows disappeared or there's now a door. Um, and it's just fucking creepy. It's just so creepy. I can't. I I love this movie. I know a lot of people hate it, but at least give it a shot, you know. And uh, I I do own the film. I didn't get the still book. I've got the just the standard Blu-ray release of the movie, mm -hmm. but I, I did buy it because, you know, when 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 I saw it, I was just I was like I want I need to distance myself from this thing to just, and it was it was it was early this year. I was just. I started thinking about the movie. Nothing prompted me to think about it. I just started thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, let me, let me buy it. So yeah. I bought it online and I watched some of it again. It's, I, I want to champion it, champion that so much, but there, but the issue is how do I recommend it to people? Yeah. Well, you have to give them, you have to preface the fact that it's not, it's not going to be what you want out of a normal movie. 
you know, if you're looking for that buttoned up ending, you're not going to get it. Yeah. If you're looking for set pieces, you're not going to get it. You kind of just have to vibe out in the, kind it, of in the, the same way a Blair Witch is, you know, it's almost the, it's almost the extreme opposite of what culture is today. You know, yeah. the fast paced give me now, uh, watch for five seconds, swipe, swipe the swipe generation, whatever you call it. It's just this. Yeah. I, I have, you, have you ever seen those YouTube videos where it's like, um, uh, uh, vintage or like thirties cartoons in another room. Have you seen those type of videos? Maybe our, our buddy Brandon has sent a couple of those in our little group chat where it'll be just like the, it'll be somebody, a really quiet dark room with like moon shining, but it's like that rag time. <laughs> and there's yeah. like a creepy cartoon playing it's a vibe yeah so the whole movie you're looking for is just a vibe and it, it plays with space and time and i just it really affected me in a really strange way you know what it affected me too but it yeah it not really a but but yeah i i know i feel you it really did affect me and i my my initial reaction getting done was like, well, nothing happened. I mm -hmm. felt like it, I felt technically like technically nothing a, does. Yeah, technically. it felt like it. Yeah, it just feels like a tease. But the more time goes by, the less I want to just say f that, f that. No, I think it needs to exist. Mm -hmm. I think the movie needs to exist because it does something I've never seen before. Right. And have a emotion that I've never felt before. Um, of course, it's not going to land with people, and I don't like to. I don't really like the argument of, well, you just don't get it. Well, you just don't get it. I don't think that's fair. I think people are smart. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm smart. I, I, I do think stuff goes over my head sometimes. And I think I didn't really grasp the movie, but I think in the beginning of the movie, they kind of do hint at the kids were dead. Right. Well, in some, the, basically the movie starts out, you have a brother and a sister and their parent leaves for work. So then you have these two kids home alone, but you don't see them. They're like, just whispering to each other like what was that what was that and these really creepy whispers but like you said you start to slowly realize wait a minute are they are they still alive because there's a point where one of them's like stab her eye stab her in the eye you know and you're like whoa whoa wait what what's happening it's it's a total vibe but it's not going to be for everybody i i but i think this i always like to push movies like this to people because i think if you are into movies some people just like the movies that they like and that's 100 percent fine i'm not going to be like oh you know you're you know you don't you're not into movies if you only watch this or this or this but i do think it's important to watch movies like this to realize there are different ways to make films different ways to affect people through film without a traditional narrative sometimes films are just meant to make you feel uneasy and not to take you on some kind of a ride right you're just supposed to sit with them and you don't have to say holy shit that was fucking amazing or that ending was killer you can just say man that was like fucking weird man and then you can right. think about it every once in a while and that's all it has to be you don't have to love it and say it's the best movie ever made i don't think it's the best movie ever made but i think if you're into watching shit outside of the box i think you should watch movies like this and at least know that they're out there you know do you think david lynch is a big fan of skin and right i think so i would think so i would like to think that he's seen it yeah that's interesting i wonder if he did see that movie yeah let, let me call him real quick yeah hit him up Okay, yeah, the great, great pick. Great discussion on that. I think that's yeah. a movie that needs to have an honest discussion and not just a mm -hmm. bash fest, which I'm sure a lot of people have just done. Yeah, on naturally, my channel, uh, naturally. we could do a, a full podcast about it, um, right. acquired take, so if anybody wants to check check that out, it's on my channel. But Are you going to resurrect that again? Um, eventually, I would really like to. I like doing the podcast. It's just so much work to edit. I was editing those. Why are, you, why are you editing podcasts? I, I don't know. I just like to, I don't know. You know what I mean? Well, there's a lot of dead air and stuff. I was also really new to doing that, and we did it in person, so we're both in the same room. So there's some awkward moments where we were kind of figuring out. Podcasting with somebody in the room like that, you think it'd be easier, but sometimes it's like, I don't know. It's it's just different. So I, I felt maybe I also like a lot of visual stuff. So I'd add visual elements and clips and photos. So Let I'm an over yeah, editor. Yeah. Yeah, okay, fair enough. What, what we got next? Where, where are you going next? Next one. You may have heard this heard of this one. This one came. This one was put out um, through uh, Yellow Veil Pictures distributed through Vinegar Syndrome. Vinegar Syndrome. What the hell is that? And this is called Daniel Isn't Real. 
Okay, I haven't yeah, heard of this. Real. I haven't seen this, but this I have stars, a feeling it's disturbing. Check this out. The two leads are played by, I believe this is true. I hope I'm not wrong. Okay, it is. It is. Miles Robbins, Robbins, and Patrick Schwarzenegger. This is Tim Robbins and Arnold Schwarzenegger's son sharing dual lead roles. And basically, you have Miles Robbins plays this kid who went through a super traumatic childhood, and he created this um, imaginary friend called Daniel. Um, and essentially what happens is, uh, his imaginary friend pushes him to do bad things. This was like a coping mechanism to deal with this traumatic childhood. And there's one inciting incident very early in his childhood where Daniel, his imaginary friend made him uh -huh. do something really, really bad. Uh -oh. So him and his mom force, uh, he's had this imaginary friend his whole life. And basically he forces after this bad thing happens, miles tells Daniel, he has to go in this dollhouse. So he basically banishes him to this little dollhouse in his, in his home, throws a blanket over it and then lives his life for like 15 years. It's very similar actually to like drop dead Fred. If I'm being honest, this is like the serious horror version of drop dead Fred. So, Later on, that in, movie may I'm gonna finish finish the plot. Finish the plot. Finish oh, this is brand new. This was in the last couple of years. This is just came out a couple of years ago. Damn, dude. Um, so it sounds good. It's really good. So Miles, uh, Tim Robbins' son, grows up and he's in college now, and he decides for whatever reason that he needs Daniel's help. So he brings him back. Oh shit. So now Daniel's back. Oh but shit. They've both grown. They're both college age, and I the the Patrick Schwarzenegger character he plays like the evil kind of bad guy um, imaginary friend who kind of helps give him confidence and talk to girls, but then also he wants to take him over basically. Um, and he really reminds me of like Ezra Miller type of character, the way he plays him kind of a creepy Ezra Miller um, uh, killing of a sacred deer kind of vibe to him. Although that's not Ezra Miller, but um, and then chaos ensues, but it's very, very weird because there's like some practical effects. There's some gore effects um, as these two characters. Basically, Daniel wants to take his him over and be him. He wants to take over his friend um, and not be imaginary anymore. Right. You know, he wants to get out of this imaginary land and be real. Um, and it's really fucking creepy. It's like the creepy horror fucked up version of... Uh, Drop Dead Fred is basically what it is. Uh, see, that sounds really good. It's I'm gonna awesome. To, I'm gonna have to grab that. Let me see if it's on the old Amazon. Yeah, it's great. I highly recommend that. Um, it's a it's a great. It's not wholly original because we have kind of seen these imaginary friend type of scenarios, or like somebody who has an invisible friend that kind of helps them um, in life. But this takes a much much darker turn, a little bit more philosophical turn, and it's really really badass. It's it's really crazy. And then after I didn't even know until after somebody told me after I watch it that I was watching Tim Robbins and Arnold Schwarzenegger's kids as the leads in this movie. But it's really creepy, man. It's great. Yeah, I like the images of it look really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's fucking great. Nice. All right, I ordered it. Where are we going next? Um. Oh, you already ordered it? Yeah, right, ordered you'll, it. you'll love it. I trust you. Have you seen this? Bug, William Friedkin's Bug. No. So this is, uh, I think it was written, was it written? The screenplay might have been written by William Friedkin, but the director of The Exorcist um, made this movie about basically paranoia and drug addiction. Um, you have Michael Shannon and Ashley Judd um, as two people who kind of come together. They're kind of like these kind of white trash, low key people like these trailer trash people who get consumed by paranoia and almost go into this, um, drug induced state. Although it's not, I'll read you this premise. Paranoia is contagious. It says a lonely waitress with a tragic past starts to feel hopeful again. Uh, um, when she begins a romance with an eccentric drifter until the first bugs arrive. So Michael Shannon shows up and he's this paranoid fucking weirdo. And you almost think he's just like this crazed drug addict who has, thinks he's has bugs inside his body. So they hold themselves up in this hotel they cover the walls and windows and foil on these black lights and they're consumed by paranoia that's being controlled by these bugs crawling in their skin. <laughs> 
And oh, dude, yeah, the images on this look oh, fucking weird, bro. And this one—it's actually been a few years since I've seen this, so I'm forgetting some of the ins and outs of what happens towards the end. But the performances by it, you picture like the most insane crackheads, like picking at their skin. I know they're inside me. I can feel them. But what if it wasn't all psychosis, or what if you didn't know if it was psychosis? Does this Michael Shannon character have some truth to what he's saying? Did he bring something into this? into ashley judd's world or is is it just like join psychosis when two people get together and have like group psychosis you don't really know but the overall themes of this movie is this anxious paranoia that just makes you feel like by the end of the time you watch this movie end of the movie you will feel like you have bugs crawling in your skin um it's very very this weird. tin foil rooms just looks fucked bro it, it it's where the movie begins and where it ends you would just never predict that it the the paranoia goes this far and you don't know how it's going to turn out and ashley Judd, what a talent that you just don't see like that often she's really really good and michael shannon's fucking awesome too god damn and it's direct it's william friedkin man he knows how to make him make he knows how to make tension and shit um, feel creepy yeah oh yeah he does i love william that's the that's my boy yeah this was uh what was this uh an imprint imprint release so it's Damn. really really good i highly recommend bug and then the the, the finale's a doozy and i i tried oh. to pick some divisive ones in here do you want to hold off oh we're at the are we at the finale we're at the finale oh yeah. shit! no no i'm ready we're at the finale and i took a really wild swing with this one i tend to like I love a lot of movies that everybody else likes, but I do trend, tend to gravitate towards movies that people don't like for whatever reason. And I never understand why. Maybe it's just because I like weird shit that, you know, makes me feel uncomfortable. I enjoy feeling uncomfortable. That's what gets my dopamine rushing. That's what gets me going is feeling uncomfortable. I agree. Yeah. The <laughs> All right. So, what, what do we got? This is one called Climax. Have you heard of this one? No. Okay. So this is by a director called Gaspar. No way. He's done a movie called Love. Um, he's done um, a lot of weird shit. He did Irreversible. Have you seen Irreversible? Oh, I've seen Irreversible. Yeah. So this guy doesn't wow. make traditional doesn't make traditional <laughs> movies. Okay? <laughs> they oftentimes they hit another movie called I Stand Alone, <laughs> which is <laughs> extremely Excuse extremely me. fucked up but this i think is kind of his masterpiece okay this movie is a one take movie once it starts the the take does not end i'm sure they hid some cuts in here and it wasn't actually filmed all in one take but it is a pov shot that goes from character to character to character as this whole place descends into utter madness chaos psychosis paranoia it's insane you basically it's a french movie so it's subtitled in french you have to get used to that right this movie doesn't have a traditional narrative um it's very strange you can't go into this movie looking for a traditional style movie that, that's why i like it so much but you have um a dance troupe that goes to this place for rehearsal for this extremely talented renowned dance crew right they want to get together and uh, basically let loose before they do their next show or before they start their whole ne next uh, learning this whole new dance show or whatever the fuck it is. But they all show up and they're all just partying together. It's the dead of winter. They're in this old kind of abandoned barn thing. The movie starts out with this person crawling to life, yeah. uh, crawling for their life in the snow. It's this big aerial shot and all you can see is this one body coming from this deserted barn with a big trail of blood and they've crawled away from this trying to get away from this chaos only to just be in a deserted land of frozen snow um, and then we get to go see what's going on inside this barn or this rehearsal space and it's a bunch of people hanging out right you have like 20 or 30 people they're drinking beers they're having fun they're smoking weed and somebody spikes the punch with a shitload of lsd but nobody knows okay so everybody just starts to act crazy for seemingly no reason and only you know the audience that somebody has spiked this punch but because nobody knows what's going on and in their minds everybody is perceiving what's happening as real 
people start to get unhinged and commit violent acts and lose their minds into utter chaos to the point this is kind of um this movie's similar kind of to mother to people who have seen mother where you're in a confined space and everything should be going normal but everything spirals out of control because everybody's just out of their fucking minds so murders happen fucking all kinds of cra- I can, you, you can't describe this movie you just have to watch it um it's it's insane it's insane there's scenes that happen in reverse there's scenes that happen from the ceiling there's scenes that happen uh, it, it, it's it's unrelenting it's very hard to describe, but it's unrelenting. Yeah. And it's called Climax. If it's anything is like irreversible, that movie was fucked. It's not as quite as disturbing as that. And everybody talks about that one scene in the hallway, like the rape scene or whatever in Irreversible. That's it's it's a little bit different. But as far as like it being kind of chaotic and not a traditional narrative, and it's not shot like a normal movie, it's disorienting. Some people might there's a lot of like strobe effects and cameras flying all over the place um, at certain points, but it's extremely disturbing when people start like, I don't know what's wrong with me. And people think they're being threatened when they're not. People think people are saying things that they're not. People think that they've been like assaulted when they haven't. So each room is like another fucking circus tent of insanity as people just lose their fucking minds into mm. murder and depraved shit. Mm. So it's pretty disturbing, but it's, in my opinion, I've said this a few times, it's a fucking masterpiece. It is a masterpiece of a film. It's really, really good. Well, there you I have love it, it, man. I, so out of your list, I'll tell you the one that's got my attention the most. Honestly, I'll tell you what the one that's got my attention with. Daniel isn't real and mother. Mm, yeah, they're great. And bugs. Yeah, so we got mother. God, man, I'm ready to watch that. Daniel, the, the plot real. to mother sounds like the. It sounds like this insane metaphor. It is. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, the Cain and Abel story is told in there. Um, everything. Yeah, every weird, chaotic, like insane Bible story is like real in this world. It's, it's what is he crazy. what is he trying to say about religion i think he's probably talking about how people interpret and manipulate religion or there's also people who um take the allegory as just um being a dedicated artist in the way that god painted the world and made the world and doesn't have time for because his wife is always trying to desperately get his attention and he doesn't have any time from her because he's too busy so there's like a certain like artist allegory where certain artists are hard to get to know and become a little megalomaniac, megalomaniacal, or whatever that word would be. Um, it, I don't know. It's it's really hard to explain. I, I think you'll really, really dig it, though. I really do. Is it mother with a cat with an apostrophe at the end? With, yeah, with the exclamation point. Mother. It's yeah. On, it's on Paramount's Plus. You got to watch it, man. You I'm watching it tonight. Watch it. I'm watching it tonight. You have to watch it. And I want to hear how insane you think it is. And all of these movies, like I said, these wait, movies. Wait, wait, wait. Dude, why is it described as horror? Because it, it, it sounds like a, it's one of those weird movies that's not even a genre. It's horror in the sense of not like monsters and creatures, but like the horror of humanity. You know, dude, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm pumped up. That's good, dude. I, I think you'll really I think you'll really dig these. I tried to pick movies like I don't think any of these movies you'll be able to approach expecting a normal movie. Like you have to be ready to think outside the box. I'm not trying to say my movie taste is you know superior to anybody else's. I'm just saying this these movies all offer you something, at least an element or a premise or characters that you haven't seen before. Well, let me ask you this. Out of all these movies, let's say somebody hasn't seen any of these. Do you think the first one they should go for to to just really get a kick in the ass would be Tusk? Or do you think they should go all the way to Climax? Climax is going to be for about 50% of audiences. Half of half and half people love it. Half All these kind of are. Tusk is more accessible than something like um climax because it is a little serious serious more um sillier and it does have a little bit more of a traditional narrative you could start out with the tusk or you could start out with annihilation i think you could get into that 
um, or Daniel isn't real. If you're wanting like something uh, before you dive into absolute insanity, you could start out with an annihilation or a Daniel isn't real. Um, and then kind of work your way up into these weirder ones. There you have it, man. Yeah. This was awesome. Great list. You got me really excited to check out some of these movies. Yeah. And um, I don't know. I'd love to bring you back for another one. We have to come up with another. Uh, we did disturbing. Yeah. This one is the weirdest movies ever made. Mm -hmm. We got to figure out what's the uh, next venture to go into. Yeah. I like doing these, man. Like these I think I think we need to do one called the most humiliating. Like the most humiliating movies oh. ever. Do you think you have a category you can make? Well, what do you well, what do you mean like humiliating for the characters? It could, or? it could mean it. It can mean humiliating in a few ways. Like, yeah. So I own this movie. Oh that, yeah. For you or like, I I don't know. It could be multi. It could be multi. That could, have that multi could either be my copy of Serbian film or it could be my hard copy DVD of 1994's Lassie. Both of those could fit <laughs> in that same category. <laughs> if the audience yeah. wants it, we'll give it to them. Yeah. But listen, man, it's great to have you back on. This was awesome. I love, I love uh, learning from you because you definitely have, you definitely have a knowledge in the, uh, how do I say this? The cinema of the dark corners mm -hmm. or, you know, like you're not a mainstream guy, mm -hmm. which I think is important. And I hope you don't lose that with uh, all your YouTube stuff, too, because I think you have a lot to offer. But at the very least, I mean, you could always come on here and I'll exploit you. So Anytime. I do appreciate that, man. For the people that may not follow you, I mean, you have it on screen, but just let them know where they can find you on YouTube and all that. I do have two channels. The My most active channel right now is the Justin David channel. Um, you can find uh, a bunch of good cringe and celebrity profiles and other people's profiles and me having a good old time over there. And then the um, my other channel, The Dead Couch, is where I talk about my collecting and movies and I have an idea to bring that channel will be resurrected by the end of this year and I have a new direction for it. So you can check me out there. Uh, the Dead Couch, Justin David on YouTube. Uh, Justin David Talks is the handle. And then uh, Justin MF David, all one word on Instagram. And I show off a lot of my movies and day-to-day -day stuff on there. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. You're not on Twitter? You're not on X? No, I never did all that. I don't have, no, yeah. I never had the brain power for it. I don't have the... I just don't, I never bothered with it. I hear you. Um, listen, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. This is always fun when we get Justin on here. Uh, we do hope you enjoyed this. We do hope uh, you can throw us some suggestions of the weirdest and strangest movies ever made down in the comment section below. And until next time, we will see you guys on the flippity flip. Take care. Huge giant thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Without you guys, this would not be possible. To get behind the scenes photos, videos, music, private live streams, and much more, you can subscribe to my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Thank you to my patrons.